Welcome back to Learner's Academy. In our last videos, we solved equations having only one arithmetic operation in them. But today, we're leveling up. We're diving into two-step equations, where things get a little more interesting. We're going to solve equations that have two math operations in them, one addition or subtraction operation, and one multiplication or division operation. This will help you solving equations having even more arithmetic operations. So, what's a two-step equation? It's exactly what it sounds like. An equation that requires two steps to solve. These equations typically involve two operations like addition or subtraction and multiplication or division. In other words, to get the unknown all by itself, you'll need to undo two operations. In previous videos, we have already learned how to undo any single arithmetic operation. But two-step equation solving is a bit trickier to solve. Firstly, there are a lot more possible combinations of those two operations. Secondly, you have to decide what order to undo those operations when there's more than one operation to decide from. For example, take this equation, 2x plus 4 equals 10. Here. The unknown value x is tangled up in two operations. Multiplication, where x is multiplied by 2, and addition, that is the plus 4 part. To solve for x, we need to undo both of these operations. But here's the tricky part. Should we undo the multiplication first or addition? Now, you might be thinking, wait, isn't there a rule for the order of operations? Absolutely. You've probably heard of PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Well, those are the rules you need to follow when simplifying mathematical expressions or equations. But solving an equation is different because we are trying to undo any operations that the unknown value is involved with so that the unknown value will be all by itself. Therefore, to solve an equation, the best strategy is to apply those order of operations rules in reverse. Using the reverse order of operations is not the only way to solve a multi-step equation, but also the easiest way. Think of it like this. If you put on socks and then shoes, you wouldn't take off your socks before your shoes, right? That'd be, well, awkward. So here's the golden rule. When solving equations, undo addition and subtraction first then multiplication and division. Let's apply this to our example. 2x plus 4 equals 10. In this equation, the unknown value x is tangled in two different operations, addition and multiplication, which is implied between 2 and the x. And to undo those two operations, we should undo addition, and then we undo multiplication. So, to undo the addition, we subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side of the equation, the plus 4 and the minus 4 cancel each other out, and we are left with 2x. And on the right-hand side of the equation, we have 10 minus 4, which is 6. In step 2, we can undo the multiplication by dividing both sides of the equation by 2. On the left side, the 2's in numerator and denominator cancel out each other, leaving x all by itself. And on the right side, we have 6 divided by 2, which comes out to be 3. Not so bad, right? Let's solve another simple two-step equation that has division and subtraction in it. x divided 2 minus 1 equals 5. As discussed, we will apply the order of operations rules in reverse. First, we undo the subtraction and then undo division operations. To undo the subtraction, we add 1 to both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side of the equation, the minus 1 and the plus 1 cancel out, leaving us with x over 2. And on right-hand side of the equation, we add 1 to 5, which gives us 6. In second step, we undo the division by multiplying both sides by 2. On the left-hand side of the equation, the 2's cancels out, leaving us with x. And on right-hand side of the equation, we multiply 2 with 6, giving us 12. So finally, 
we get x equals 12. Neat, isn't it? Now, let's kick it up a notch. What happens when equations involve groups, or in other words, parentheses? Things get a little more interesting. Do you remember parentheses group things? And as per PEMDAS, we need to do any operations that are inside parentheses first. Or we can say that operation inside parentheses or group is to be conducted first. That is when you are doing the operations. However, to undo operations, we follow the reverse order, right? This means that for undoing operations, we need to do groups in the last. To see what it means, let's solve this equation 2 multiplied by whole x plus 4 equals 10. Here parentheses have been used to x plus 4. While this might not seem like much of a difference from our previous example, however, it brings a huge change to the answer once the equation is solved. This is because of the fact that in the original equation, the first two is only being multiplied by the x, but in the new equation, it's being multiplied by the entire group x plus 4, and that's going to change how we solve it. So, how do we solve this? Again, we follow the PEMDAS in reverse to undo the operations. Here we have two operations, one multiplication, which is implied between two and x plus four. The second operation is parenthesis, which hold the addition operations. Here's how it is done. We're still going to follow our order of operations rules in reverse. First, we undo the multiplication, which is implied between 2 and group of x plus 4. And then afterwards, we are undoing the parenthesis, which is holding x plus 4. In step 1, we undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by 2. On the left-hand side of the equation, the 2 on in the numerator and the 2 on the denominator cancel out each other leaving us with only x plus 4 on that side. And on the right-hand side, we have 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Now, we have much simpler equation left and easy to solve. We can make the equation even simpler than that, because now that there's nothing else on left-hand side of the equal sign with the group x plus 4, so we can remove parentheses. Remember? That parentheses are required if we have to apply any operation to the whole group. Once there is no operation to be applied to the group, then the parentheses can be removed. In step two, we just need to undo the addition by subtracting four from both sides. On the left-hand side, the plus four and the minus four cancel out, leaving x all by itself. And on the other side, we have 5 minus 4, which is 1. So, finally, we get x equals 1. See how the grouping changed the answer? That's the power of parentheses. Now, let's talk about something interesting and sneaky. The implied groups. These are groups that don't have parentheses but are still treated as groups. A classic example fractions. Do you recall the second example we solved? x divided by 2 minus 1 equals 5. There, 1 was being subtracted from the entire x divided by 2 term. Let's change this equation to x minus 1 whole divided by 2 equals 5. This may seem quite similar to the previous equation, but now that the 1 is up the fraction line, or in other words, in numerator. It's only being subtracted from the x and not the two in denominator. Here, the x minus one is on top of the fraction line, which means it's an implied group. So we treat it just like we would with parentheses. But you might be wondering, how can x minus one be considered a group when there are no parentheses or brackets around it? That's a great question. In algebra, the fraction line naturally groups everything above it as one unit and everything below it as another. For example, 
In this algebraic expression, all terms on the top of the fraction line form one group, while all terms on the bottom form another. Of course, we could add parentheses to make it extra clear, but it's not necessary. In algebra, grouping above and below a fraction line is automatically understood or implied. So, coming back to the problem, x minus 1 whole divided by 2 equals 5. Here, we have a group of x minus 1 in numerator and a division operation of 2 in denominator. As we have learned, to undo group or parenthesis and division, we have to follow PEMDAS in reverse order, right? In step 1, we undo the division by multiplying both sides by 2. On the left-hand side of the equation, the 2 on top and the 2 on the bottom cancel out each other, and we are left with group x minus 1 on that side. On right-hand side, 5 multiplied by 2 equals 10. In step 2, we undo the subtraction by adding 1 to both sides. On the left-hand side of the equation, the minus 1 and the plus 1 cancel, leaving x all by itself. And on the other side, we have 10 plus 1, which is 11. And there you have it. x equals 11 is the final answer. As you can see, solving two-step equations is certainly trickier than single-step equations due to the various possible combinations and grouping methods. However, if you approach it step-by-step step and focus on reversing operations using the order of operations in reverse, the process becomes much simpler. Make sure to pay close attention to how elements are grouped in an equation and watch for those implied groups above and below the fraction line. Since two-step equations come in many variations, the key to mastering two-step equations lies in practice. Try solving different variations, and soon you'll be breezing through them. If you found this helpful, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more educational stuff explained in easy and interesting way. Until next time, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.